I won't ask you to stand up. <laughs> Maybe you know who wrote each Bible. <laughs> and to whom each book was written for. The truth is that Jesus doesn't care if you can do that. Let me rephrase. He may care. He doesn't care that much. In other words, he's not impressed with your knowledge or your talent of being able to quote Bible books. When it comes down to Judgment Day, I don't think that Jesus is going to pull us over to the side and say, all of you that can quote all 66 books of the Bible or can name all 66 books of the Bible, you stand over here. And I'll even give you two tries. But if you can't, you stand over here. That's not what's going to separate the sheep from the goat. Amen? Amen. We've read the word, right? We know what he said. Y'all wake up. I know you're cold, but I know you're not frozen either. You're not the frozen chosen. Be the chosen, if not frozen. So that's not what he's good. What he's going to do? He's not going to separate us by whether we can <coughs> do these things or not. You may have been born into a Christian home, and you may have rarely missed a weekend in church in your lifetime growing up. You may be in, have been able to and be able to to quote the Lord's prayer. You may know John three sixteen. You may know the twenty third Psalm. Ever since you were a young child, that's wonderful. But that's not knowing Jesus difference. Now if that describes you, not just because you can quote these things, but if that's your relationship with Christ by quoting these things, if that describes you, what it's really describing is a relationship where you know Jesus rather than describing a relationship where you have with him. You're describing a relationship where you know about him instead of a relationship where you know him. If there's knowledge without intimacy, you're probably a fan rather than a follower. Somebody turn to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. I want to... We're going to have a little Hebrew lesson. first part, and then I want you to just compare it with whatever translation you have. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Stop right there. That's what mine says. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Now, the Hebrew word for knew is red yada. Yada, yada, yada. word for know or knew was Yah. And the best way to define that word Yah is to know completely or to be completely known. Know everything about. It. Now, let me finish reading that verse. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. Stop. Now, Adam may have known Eve's name. He may have known what kind of fig leaves she wanted that particular day for her dress. But just because he knew that, Eve didn't conceive Cain. Did it? Come on, people. Help me out this morning. Just by him knowing her, is that how she conceived? Because he knew her name? Somebody give me a translation that says other than knew. What's your say, Sister Carrie? I said Adam played with Eve. Somebody else got something different? The Living Bible says, and Adam had sexual intercourse with Eve. I think we all knew, even before we gave you the other translations, that that's what it meant, right? Amen. So this is a this is a yada moment between Adam and Eve. Right? This is an intimate moment. It's an intimate connection on every level. To know and to be known completely. And it's a picture I think that will help us get to what it really means 
to know Christ. There are a lot of other words that the writers could have used to describe this sexual intimacy, if you will, that's taking place. But the word here in Genesis 4 is yada, the word for no. So when the Bible uses this word for no, it means much more than knowledge. It describes that personal, personal, intimate relationship that's going on there in the most intimate connections, if you will. One Hebrew scholar defined the word this way, the word yod, the word no. A mingling of the souls. A mingling of the souls. Now that's more than knowledge, isn't it? That's intimacy. So now that you understand that the word translated no is used to describe a man and a woman being intimate with one another, they yachted each other. We're not, sign, we're not doing sign film thing. They yachted. They knew they had a personal, intimate relationship connected with one another. It doesn't just mean sexual intercourse. Don't, don't go off on tangents here. But they knew each other very in a very intimate way. Are you with me? I don't want to. I don't want people to think I'm trying to teach something crazy here. So keep that in mind when we're talking about this very personal, intimate relationship. When I talk to you about God, how He wants to know you, and how He wants to be known by you. If you trace the usage of the word yada throughout the Old Testament, you'll find that over and over again it's the same word that God uses to describe his relationship with us. Over and over it's the same word that he wants to use to be known by you. In fact, if we, we've, we've read this verse, we've preached on it a number of times, Psalm 139, you don't have to turn there. But David uses this word a half a dozen times to describe how that God knows us. Listen, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Understand? I mean, think about it. The word, the same connection used here, used here to describe a man and a wife is used how God knows you and how he wants to be known by you. 